One of the things HCP is trying to do in order to ensure that there's continued genetic diversity in cocoa is identifying interesting genetics that are out there. Interesting can come in a lot of different forms, but one of the main ones we look at with HCP is flavor. Pretty early in, we realized that Belize had a special flavor, so we worked with an agronomist, Dan O'Doherty from Cacao Services, and he came down here and he took samples from a number of farms, and he did the fermentation process, and he sent them in along with the leaf samples of the trees so they could genotype exactly what were the genetics of the trees that they were tasting. Once that was submitted, we were able to get the designation, and it was a blind process, so the panel tasted the beans, they liked the beans, and they didn't really know it was from Belize or anything about it until afterwards. After they did the genotyping, they found that it was predominantly a melanado, Upper Amazon Foresteros, a little Nacional, and a little Trinitario, which is a Melanado and Criollo kind of mixed together. And you can find that pretty much anywhere in Central America. The special part about Belize is that I think it's the terroir, I think it's the microclimate. Just like grapes, you'll have different flavors of the same varietal of grapes, tasting completely different depending on where they grow. So Belize has a very special climate and it has a distinct flavor because of that. If we don't think about flavor and think about genetic diversity and sustainability, we, we could get into real trouble with cooking. I think it was the extinction part. The feeling that if we didn't do something, even small, that eventually those farmers would stop growing cacao and move on to something else that was much more lucrative for them. It's not their fault. It's an economic result. Agroforestry is the core of our business model in our cacao sourcing. We believe that cacao, in order to be sustainable, has to also provide a shelter for biodiversity like uh, birds, animals, um, and to have that you've got to have some intercropping and, and, and diversity on your farm. So the Maya Mountain Cacao Demonstration Farm started back in 2014 with the mission to have a trial space to kind of do primary research for our microclimate, there's very little primary research being done on Belize cacao from a production standpoint. We're always focusing on production as well as fine flavor. So we have 60 acres where we're testing the realities of market production in Belize, using it primary research to kind of inform decisions about what we tell farmers. We do a lot of advising to farmers in our network about what to do. We have extensions go out, so we want to have that information when we go out there. It's been a success so far in that we've learned a lot. Going forward, I think that we're going to continue to use it as a learning space, and it's great that one of the HCP field trials is on our demonstration farm. So HCP is funding the field trials at all of our sites through a partnership with Penn State and USDA. Also, what we've been doing with HCP funding for this project is we did a number of trainings where we had farmers come in. Farmers don't know what is heirloom, what is fine flavor, especially in Belize in a country where all of the cacao or the majority of the cacao here is fine flavor, so the distinction is hard to make. So we've been doing some awareness trainings within our network to say why your cacao is special, why you shouldn't run after the highest producing seedling you find. Just because it's high producing doesn't mean it's a great flavor, so always look back and make sure it's promoting the local flavor. 